The first type of bonding we'll investigate is ionic bonding. And typically, when we observe ionic bonding, we have a main group metal bonded to a nonmetal. And in this process, a transfer of electrons occurs. So the metal will lose an electron, forming a cation, and the nonmetal will gain an electron and in the process it will form an anion. Collectively this will attain an octet. And in this particular process the number of electrons lost must equal the number of electrons gained. And we can use Lewis symbols to show where the electrons are coming from. So if we look at sodium chloride, which is NaCl, we have sodium, which has one valence electron, and chlorine, which has seven valence electrons. And I'm going to use X's and circles here to indicate where the electrons are coming from. We have a metal and a nonmetal, so this is going to form an ionic bond in which the sodium transfers its electron to the chloride, forming NaCl. So the structure or the Lewis symbol that results is going to look something like this. And here, this is going to indicate an ionic bond is taking place, which is a transfer of electrons. And when this transfer takes place, the sodium is going to have a positive charge, and the chloride is going to have a negative charge. And what happens here is that we can form an extended solid and it'll form a crystal structure and we'll talk about the specifics of those crystal structures in a later section. We can also look at other structures such as potassium sulfide. Potassium sulfide has a formula of K2S and in this case we have a sulfur which has six valence electrons and potassium which has one valence electron. So when potassium transfers its electron to sulfur, if it only transfers one electron we only have seven valence electrons. So in order to achieve the octet we need one more electron and we get that by having another potassium. So this is why the formula is K2S. So when this particular ionic bond forms, we have the six electrons from sulfur and the two electrons, one each from each potassium, giving us our Lewis structure here. And in this case, the sulfur will have a 2 minus charge, and the potassium has a plus 1 charge. In addition to these examples, we can look at aluminum oxide, which is Al2O3. And in this particular case, if we look at an oxygen and an aluminum, aluminum has three valence electrons. Oxygen has six valence electrons. So what can happen is we can take two electrons from aluminum 
to help fill oxygen's octet. But in doing so, we still have one electron here on aluminum that is not in an octet. So we need another oxygen. And this oxygen also has six valence electrons. So this leftover electron from aluminum can fill in over here, but now we only have seven electrons around the oxygen. So we need another aluminum. This one electron from aluminum can then filled the oxygen octet on the second oxygen, but we now have two valence electrons on the aluminum that need to be filled in an octet. And to do that, we need one more oxygen. So everything gets its octet here. And in this process, when the electrons are transferred, the aluminum will have a plus three charge and each oxygen has a minus two charge. So the Lewis symbols allow us to keep track and kind of do a bookkeeping of where these electrons are moving. And as a consequence, ionic bonds are very strong and give ionic compounds their characteristic properties. And these properties include a very, very high melting point. And like I said earlier, these ions are arranged systematically in an alternating cation anion pattern they're going to give us a very definite shape and they're going to form a crystal structure. So this is the theory behind what's happening when an ionic bond forms and it gives us the reasoning for why we name compounds the way that we do and how in earlier sections we had said they charge balance. The reason they charge balance is because that charge balance is going to allow each species in this compound to form the stable octet.